Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new series of video which will be giving the basics of work phase planning and how we mainly run it on a project successfully. A bit about myself, uh, I have 22 years of experience in the construction site. I'm an active subject matter expert in work phase planning. I was a work phase planning champion for one of the largest projects in Kazakhstan, which is a modularized oil and gas project. I have a good experience in AutoCAD forge development, and I know Python and C Sharp, which are mainly used to develop on top of forge. Okay, what's work phase planning in a nutshell? The work phase planning is a project management method that ensures your direct workers will receive their work front without any constraint. And these work front should be in line with the schedule. This is in short what we talk about work phase planning. I know there are many definitions in the market where somebody will divide it into 1200 man hours and so on. But in a nutshell, this is the whole intent of work phase planning. When we are talking about the work phase team, what do they need? What do they really require? They need a clear scope. They need the latest drawing, no hold whatsoever. If there is any revision, they need to know immediately. They need to have their material bagged and tagged. They should be able to report their progress in a very simple way. And mostly, they need to have the proper training for safety and trade because in most cases, this delays the start of the project. They should have permits on time. They should be aware of the quality requirements and the activity which is around them. And if there is any scaffolding or any other prerequisite job that need to be completed before they start the job. If all of these are met, eventually the work phase planning will be able to run seamlessly. Now, if we look at historically speaking, advanced work packaging did not start until 2012. Before that, they used to call it work phase planning. And the advanced work packaging mainly is carried during the design and procurement. But when you reach the construction, it is uh, the name is changed to work phase planning because this is exactly what's been done. The contractor work phase planning team will eventually divide the project into installation work package after he received it already divided as construction work package. And normally, whenever he's doing this division, he agree with the construction team on how is the sequence of job and so on. But there is some sort of rule of thumb that this installation work package should not exceed two weeks of work for the crew who's handling it. Now, when we say a clear scope, what do we mean? Mainly, the key requirement to have a proper clear scope is everything in your project should be tagged and it should have a unique identifier so that whenever you want to get its material, you want to work it out, you want to get the quality requirement for this, you know about which object you're talking about. So basically, when we say a clear scope, in the installation work package, I should have all the objects with their unique identification available. I need to know the start and finish date. I need to have an idea about the key quantities and what sort of man hour I need so that I know how to plan my resources accordingly. And if there is a 3D model shot, this is a plus. Uh, when we say relevant drawing, basically, uh, in most cases, when people talk about relevant drawing, they talk about the IFC that really represent the insulation work package. But we need to add on top of this mainly is the uh, general drawing, for example, when you need them to support your insulation work package, you need to have some sort of highlight so that you don't spend the whole day searching for which area we are talking about. And if there is any reference like... Uh, uh, specification or detailed drawing and so on, we need to put only the relevant uh, references to that specific IWP and they should be accessible easily. 
Now, for relevant material mainly, in most cases, whenever we are executing a job, the engineering contractor is a person who buys the material and he free issue it to the contractor. So the material should be clearly defined for the scope. So, for example, if you're talking about structural steel, you need exactly to know what sort of material you need by tag, by bolt, and so on. This material should be staged and secured in one location. In other words, if you want to go to pick it up, you don't want your trailer to go to 10 locations to pick up the scope of one IWP. It should be all in one location. If there is any supporting fasteners, connection, or any supporting material, it should be available as well and accounted for. Now, the work phase supervision normally, whenever they want to receive this material, they should have some sort of document which allow them to pick up this material and sign upon it so that we know who took this material. And definitely, they should be able to have some sort of capable transportation depending on the IWP because I've seen many cases where the person go with a small trailer and the uh, the material of that installation work package require a huge trailer or some sort of crane. All of these need to be calculated prior to the start of the IWP. Well, this is enough for now. In my next lesson, basically, I'll be talking about the basis of reporting, uh, what sort of prerequisite is required to do a proper reporting and how we will be able to produce installation work package that whenever they are completed, you can immediately produce a progress report, a handover report, and mainly a payment application. Thank you for your time and I hope this video was beneficial.